only just recently, as a result of constant pestering and questioning of Nick Smith and Parliament, that we've actually got the National Party to acknowledge that farmers will have to pay a cost, they will be up for electricity, and it'll be quite significant. What the National Party haven't wanted to acknowledge, and still don't acknowledge, is that not only are farmers up for electricity and diesel, they're also up for the emissions of their dairy factories. And the reason they're up for the emissions of dairy factories is Nick Smith chose to base our emissions trading scheme on what he thought would be Australia's scheme. It actually hadn't been passed into law last November, and Treasury advised him not to do it, but he chose to base our scheme on the Australian scheme. The Australian scheme was based on a heavy industry, mining, and as a consequence, Fonterra qualified for very, very few allowances for emissions as a consequence of our basing our scheme on the Australian scheme. And of course what's happened is Australia's scheme has been suspended and won't actually come into effect until at least 2013, if at all. So our farmers are up for quite a significant penalty, uh, and that starts in, in July. People say, where is the money going? Where is, where, where is all this money going? Well, the Green Party is very good at saying in Parliament, it's going to the polluters. You know, we're subsidising polluters. Well, two points about that. First of all, they're not polluters. We're taxing carbon emissions and carbon dioxide, and carbon dioxide is not a pollutant. It's a gas that's very important to the plant growth. But ignoring that, so it's, I wouldn't call them polluters, I'd call them emitters. But regardless of this, we're not actually subsidising emitters. Essentially, we're paying massive subsidies to foresters. Now, is anyone here in, in the forestry industry as a matter of interest? No. Well, I, I had three uh, foresters in my meeting in fielding this afternoon. And there are two types of foresters affected. There are foresters who planted trees before 1990. And there are foresters who planted trees since, or 1990, and more recently. And the reason that 1990 is important is because um, when we signed the Kyoto Protocol, we agreed to keep our emissions of carbon dioxide below 1990 levels. And trees uh, absorb carbon, and the trees that are growing in New Zealand basically act as a credit for our increase in emissions. And what the uh, government, uh, the previous government provided and the current national government has adopted, is that those people who have planted trees before 1990, under the Kyoto, Kyoto Protocol rules, are required to replant their trees, replant their trees in exactly the same spot if they wish to harvest them. Uh, alternatively, if, they, if those foresters aren't prepared to replant their trees in exactly the same spot, they have to pay a penalty of about $20,000 per hectare. And, well, there's a potentially a very real cost that people who have got pre-1990 forestry incur, and that is um, that they will be required to replant their trees in exactly the same spot, and that may not be in their best interest, particularly if they have land which they might otherwise get to convert to better use, and particularly dairy, because there's been a lot of land in the central North Island converted to dairy. But as a country, we don't know what the real loss of any of those people will be, because we have only signed up to the Kyoto Protocol up until 2012. There is no commitment we've made beyond uh, the 31st of December 2012, and following the, um, the breakdown of the negotiations in Copenhagen in December, uh, I know that our negotiators think it's much, much less likely that there will be any uh, Kyoto-like agreement coming uh, beyond 2012. What may follow is a series of best endeavours agreements, but nothing like the binding commitments that we have in Kyoto. And even if there was to be an agreement, we believe the government's likely to change the land use rules, which would give uh, foresters, pre-1990 foresters, a great deal more flexibility. But <clears throat> in essence, what the government is proposing to do is to essentially pay a billion dollars of compensation to pre-1990 foresters to compensate them uh, for the losses that the government may think they incur. And what acts is, is we don't know what those losses are going to be. Uh, they'll be heavily dependent on whether we have a success agreement and any rule change. And while it's all very well to say that we can review the scheme in 2011, as Nick Smith was saying, once we've paid out the first instalment of that $1 billion, which is about $400 million, it'll be much harder to get that money back. And just very quickly, the second group of uh, foresters are the people who planted trees since 1990. They are up for some $1.6 billion worth of emissions credits, or, or, credits, or uh, credits to emit carbon or to absorb carbon. And that's for the five-year period to the end of 2012. So in essence, the government's looking at over $2 billion 
of credits or compensation to foresters. So the ETS is not about taking money off electricity consumers and paying it to emitters. It's about taking money off all New Zealanders, all consumers of electricity, all users of petrol, anyone who eats, and paying that essentially to foresters. And you may have heard the Prime Minister on television saying we're going to pay money to foresters, we're going to plant trees. And from that you get the impression, well, this money is to plant new trees. Well, the bad news is that the great bulk of the money that we're paying is not to plant new trees, it's to subsidise the trees that are already in the ground, substantially planted by people who didn't expect any subsidy because when they planted those trees. And that's another reason why the ACT Party says that we shouldn't be proceeding with the scheme. ACT is trying to create awareness of this issue. We know that our message is getting through because the National Party are responding and are criticising what I say. Nick Smith said on Sunday that the ACT Party is spreading myths. Well, let's just look at some of the myths that Nick Smith says that we spread. ACT has said that New Zealand is a world leader. The Prime Minister promised that he would not lead on climate change in the last election and we see we're taking the world leading position. Well, Nick Smith says that that's not true, that of the 38 developed countries in the world who signed the Kyoto Protocol, uh, 29 have an emissions trading scheme. Well, the 29 countries that Nick Smith is talking about are the 27 countries in the European Union, plus Norway and Switzerland. And yes, there is an emissions trading scheme for that whole European bloc, but in essence, <coughs> what's happening there is that countries are penalising each other. So a French uh, steel manufacturer is having extra costs imposed on it, and it's competing with a German steel manufacturer, and they're in the same ballpark, if you like that. Same, they've got the same cost disadvantage. And 80% of European exports are sold within Europe. So it's Germany exporting to France, Germany exporting to Spain, Germany exporting to Italy. 80% of European exports are within Europe alone. Only 20% go out onto the open market and have to compete with countries that don't impose this extra cost. Well, look at New Zealand's situation. None of our four major trading partners have emissions trading schemes. None. Um, yes, about 15% of our exports go to Europe. So yes, 15% of our exports go to a trading bloc that does have these extra costs imposed on it. But that means 85%, 85% don't. And if you look at our top four trading partners, Australia doesn't have an emissions trading scheme, China doesn't, United States doesn't, Japan doesn't. Our fifth largest trading partner is the United Kingdom which is affected by the European ETS. But our 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th trading partners are all in Asia, and they don't. So essentially 85%, 85% of our exports are going out into world markets, having to compete in countries where there is no emissions trading scheme, and that compares with 20%. And Nick Smith says we're not a world leader. But if you don't trust me, just trust Nick Smith's own words. Because when Nick Smith actually spoke on the bill that went through Parliament last September and <coughs> again in November, on three separate occasions he said New Zealand will be the first country outside Europe to have an emissions trading scheme and we will have the most comprehensive trading scheme in the world. Those are Nick Smith's own words. And I invite the journalists to go to Hansard and you'll see that in the speeches and his press releases. He actually said New Zealand will have the most comprehensive ETS. And now six months later, and the ACT Party stands up and says we're leading the world, it doesn't suit the National Party for us to bring this to people's attention. The second thing that the National Party say is they refuse to acknowledge that as owners, the taxpayers owner of Genesis, or in fact, principally Meridian and Mighty Repower, Power, but even Genesis, because Genesis has got renewable energy, will make significant windfall gains. 